Give God the glory, give Him the praise. Are you the one? Then this lesson is about you. Because one makes a difference. John the Baptism sent his disciples to ask the Messiah, Jesus. Matthew 11, verse 3, part B. Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Queen Esther pondered the words. Esther 414. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom? For such a time as this? Are you the one? That the Lord is calling for, in these last and evil days. To stand up and be counted for him? Are you the significant one? That no one expects to be a hero and save a city? Do you have a heart like King David's heart? Has the Lord brought you from humble beginnings? 2 Samuel 7, verse 5, part B. Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? 2 Samuel 7, verse 8, part B. I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel.
Are you the one that people overlook, and count as insignificant, like David was counted by his brothers? No one expected a shepherd boy, with a slang shot, to be the hero, and champion. That salvation day? Are you the one that the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, values for such times as this? Are you the one, that God has set in place, as the one, in front of a bunch of zeros, to bring about the saving salvation of friends? family, and or co-workers? Are you the significant one in your community where you live? Have you built a temple for the Lord to dwell in? 1 Corinthians 6 19 What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? If the Spirit of God dwells in you, then you are a significant one, because you have access to the wisdom of God, which comes with the gift of discernment and the power of the Almighty Creator of the heavens and the earth. This parable is about you, the wise servant and child of God, sanctified and set aside for such a times as these times. Will you stand in the gate and proclaim the significance of the Lord to all those that pass through? In today's Sunday school lesson a comparison is made between a soft-spoken man treated as a little person in the kingdom and labeled insignificant and poor but wise and those that are loud boisterous full of pride considering themselves to be very important people very significant dignitaries and world influential leaders of society king solomon illustrates in his parable that they are foolish reading from the reader's bible i saw something else under the sun the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither is the bread to the wise, nor the wealth to the intelligent, nor the favor to the skillful. For time and chance happen to all men, for surely no man knows his time. Like fish caught in a cruel new, or birds trapped in a snare, so men are ensnared in an evil time, that suddenly falls upon them. I have also seen this wisdom under the sun, and it was great to me. There was a small city with few men. A mighty king came against it, surrounded it, and built large siege ramps against it. Now a poor wise man was found in the city, and he saved the city by his wisdom. Yet no one remembered that poor man. And I said, Wisdom is better than strength, but the wisdom of the poor man is despised, and his words are not heeded. The calm words of the wise are heeded, over the shouts of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Section 1 of our lesson is entitled, The Poor But Wise Man. This parable shows us that words of wisdom are better than brute strength in resolving conflicts. Our lesson scripture. Ecclesiastes 9.13 This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. The phrase under the sun is used 29 times in this book. And it depicts events and times under heaven, here on earth. Therefore King Solomon is comparing the wisdom of the unrighteous to the wisdom that comes from God, that the righteous possess. Most people are not receptive to wise counsel. Why? Because the wise often appear to be loners, strangers, weak, antisocial, introverts, and hidden away from the gates of commerce, trade, and transactions. They are often like the man described in Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Psalms 1, 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Psalms 1, 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Psalms 26, 4. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor do I consort with hypocrites. Psalms 36, 1. An oracle is within my heart, Concerning the sinfulness of the wicked, there is no fear of God before his eyes. Psalms 119, 104. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore I hate every wrong path. Jeremiah 15, 17. I never sat in the company of revelers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me, and you had filled me with indignation. Psalms 90, 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. 1 Peter 2, 9. Saints, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. 
2 Timothy 2 21. If anyone therefore purges himself from these, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, and suitable for the master's use, prepared for every good work. So saints, why are we trying to fit in, trying to be popular, be snug as a bug in a rug, with a world dominated by lying evil men, and women, who have no fear of the living God, that made them? Why are the children of God trying to be like the children of the world? The world does not love the children of God that are righteous. Why should the righteous children of God love the world? John 17, 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Our lesson scripture. Ecclesiastes 9, 14. There was a little city, and few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Pardon me, may I interrupt with just a side note to today's lesson? Okay. Did you know that this paraphrase parable is actually based upon a true story in the Bible? Where is it found? 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 16 through 22. Thank you. Line upon line, precept upon precept, is how our understanding of the scriptures is built. Back to the parable. Our lesson scripture, Ecclesiastes 9.15. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered. That same poor man. Proverbs 21-22 A wise man scalleth the city of the mighty, and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. In today's parable the wise person is poor and wise. If the man is so poor, why does he seem so content and rich? Because he dwells in the shelter of the Most High and rest under the shadow of the Almighty. According to the parable, he was not hailed as a hero or rewarded for saving the city. Instead he was sent back to his humble abode to live out the rest of his days without much fanfare. He was no one superhero to the elders of the city, after risking his life for the people. He was still an insignificant big zero. Ecclesiastes 2.16 For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten, and how deep the wise man is the fool. Ecclesiastes 8.10 And so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. Ecclesiastes 4.13 Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king, who will no more be admonished. Ecclesiastes 7.19 Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Our lesson scripture, Ecclesiastes 9.16 then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Proverbs 8.14 Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. The everlasting love of God is better than the short-term lust of the flesh. Yet a man, or a woman, a boy or a girl rejects the everlasting love of God. Choosing to lust every day in the flesh until they perish from walking on the earth. So then where is a man's weakness? It is in the lust of his flesh. So then a man without godly wisdom is a weak man? Yes, without the strength of the counsel, wisdom, and understanding of his creator, a man is weak, like the dust of the earth. Ecclesiastes 7.12 Wisdom is a shelter, as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this, that wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. The poor man in our parable was still a wise counselor full of good wisdom, after he saved the city from certain destruction using his wisdom and the knowledge of the law of Moses. But sadly, the unwise decided they no longer desired to heed the poor man's wisdom. His wisdom was not in vogue, nor popular, nor tolerated. Maybe he was rejected because of his appearance. Perhaps he did not have the proper attire, mannerisms, linguistic abilities, finances, royal contacts, goods to lavish on his would-be friends, and a fine home. If he possessed some, or most of these things, certainly he would have been given honor. And perhaps given a seat in the council of elders of the city. Sunday morning wisdom is no good if it is only applied on Sunday morning. Men are Christians and saints. 
try to appear before God to be wise, humble, and obedient servants. If they go to church on Sunday morning, it is to gain honor, respect, popularity, and prestige, and to impress their peers. But come Sunday night, all day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the foolishness in them trample upon the wisdom they may have gained on Sunday morning. Many Christians, called saints, will not pray daily and ask for wisdom, but when trouble comes knocking on their doors, they will find that they have time to pray and ask others to pray for them and their concerns. They might even read a chapter in the Holy Bible and post a favorite scripture somewhere on their social media. Sunday School Section 1 Test Question What happened to the poor man after he saved the city? Section 2 of our lesson is entitled, The Benefit of Wisdom Over Folly. Our lesson scripture, Ecclesiastes 9.17. The words of wise men are heard inquired more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. A wise man or woman will seek the salvation of the Lord, which comes with a still, small, quiet, voice. It is full of the precious words of life, emulating from the presence of God. The wise allow the word to speak peace to their souls, and truth, and understanding. They do not seek a king to save them who is foolish, among fools. 1 Thessalonians 4.11 And that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. Why do some children of God speak so forcefully, and so sharply, with a threatening attitude? Their wisdom is not heard clearly, or understood. Because their spirit is seen as hostile. And the sparks fly from their mouth. Invoking the fire of the spirit of fear. In those that hear them. Isaiah 42, 2. Wisdom, he will not shout or cry out, or raise his voice in the streets. Matthew 12, 19. Wisdom, he will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. Ecclesiastes 10, 12. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. James 3.17 But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. James 3.18 And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Ecclesiastes 7, 5. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise, than for a man to hear the song of fools. Isaiah 30, 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Proverbs 10:10. 10, 10. A fool is, he who winks maliciously, and causes grief. And a chattering fool comes to ruin. James 1:20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Saints, speak softly and carry a big stick, is an old saying. When the big stick you are carrying is the power of the living God dwelling in you, there is no need to yell, and scream, and act foolishly. Let wisdom speak for you. Let wisdom speak peace, and joy to your soul. Peace be still, and watch how the storms in your life are brought under control of your Father God in heaven. Our lesson scripture, Ecclesiastes 9.18. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. The word wisdom, of the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will work for you, and through you to accomplish what no weapon of warfare can accomplish. 1 John 4.4. 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world. Romans 8.31 What shall we then say to these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? Sunday School Section 2 Test Question Who can be identified as a destructive force? Let us close with prayer for an anointing of wisdom today. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come before you by faith. Not fit for the anointing of your wisdom. But we ask today that you will forgive our sins, trespasses, transgression, and iniquities. And then create in us clean hearts, and anoint our heads with the oil of wisdom. So that our cups will run over, with your anointing. We ask. And receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
A complete transcript of the study notes will be available for download for our Gospel Works subscribers. A link to the notes will be posted in the comments section on YouTube. And in the Sunday School Teachers Forum group on Facebook, for private members. An audio version of the lesson will be produced, and made available, for download, from the Gospel Works Music Store located at ReverbNation.com Gospel Works. If there are a sufficient number of audio requests. Let us say, Amen for the Word of God for us. Jesus is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us say, Praise the Lord. Give Him praise. Amen. Let us say, Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.